Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Fish Market Academy, where we teach you how to fish for gains. So in this video, we'll be exploring the Nier protocol and how it works, as well as the ecosystems that exist within Nier. So if you found this video useful, do remember to like, share, and subscribe, and let's get started. And as always, nothing I say is financial advice. All of these links will also be down in the description below. So what is Nier? NIA is a proof-of-stake blockchain that allows developers to build applications using their NIA SDK while also making it easily accessible and user-friendly for consumers. So NIA uses sharding to maximize efficiency, which is similar to what ETH 2.0 is trying to create, and they are also the first step to solve the trilemma of usability, scalability, and security, or at least that's what they claim. So let's explore how NIA solves the trilemma because that's a pretty big problem that we are facing in crypto right now. So NIA operates in a similar manner compared to centralized clouds such as AWS and Azure, uh, but of course the problem with centralized cloud is that they are a single entity with a single point of failure, so that's not very good. So NIA obviously does this, but in a decentralized way, governed by a global community, and the programs and assets stored on the NIA blockchain is transparent and secure as well. And the TLDR for me is basically NIA is like having multiple mini AWS with sharding throughout the globe. So that's how they claim to have overcame their trilemma. So let's go into a bit more details on how this is actually done and what this actually means. The main way they're doing this is through the nightshade mechanism, which is how they do their sharding. So these are some of the key developments that they're doing. And the first one, of course, is the nightshade. Like I mentioned, it's the most important one, I feel. And then after that is Doomslug, Aurora, and the Rainbow Bridge. Uh, we won't be going too much detail into uh, nightshade and Doomslug, but we will put some links in the description below if you are interested in understanding more about sharding and their Doomslug mechanism. So what is Nightshade? So Nightshade specifically is their way of sharding and it's how they actually reach consensus and it runs on a leader-based system. This is similar to Solana. So you can imagine Near Protocol having similar speeds to Solana. And how sharding works is that they produce the chunks of data. So you know in a blockchain, you have different properties within the block. You have the sender address, the receiver address, the transaction uh, amount, etc. And sharding means that you take the individual property and then you just use that to create a single block. So the, the block is now a lot smaller and consists of just a lesser or just one property. And then afterwards, they will then put all of this property into a block and then that gets sent to the blockchain. So it's a way of further breaking down, and that's why they call it sharding, breaking down the blockchain into smaller components so that it's easier to process. If you would like to find out more about sharding, we will leave a link down in the description below. So in terms of the nightshade mechanism, there are actually a few different phases. We are currently in phase zero. Phase one, phase two, and phase three are going to be coming soon and the whole thing will be expected to be finished by the end of this year so 2022 uh, that's quite fast because if you go through some of what they're doing it's actually really interesting and it's going to help decentralize the whole ecosystem so you know for example if you have like a mini aws the hardware requirements can be potentially expensive and that's going to make it not as decentralized because you can't get everyone to afford this kind of expensive hardware and the dynamic resharding or basically their whole approach allows it to be more decentralized and if you're interested in that we'll put a link down in the description below as well so what is aurora aurora is a high performance evm built on the near protocol and it's basically an ethereum layer 2 scaling solution that allows developers to create their dApps on this low transaction fee uh, platform and they have high throughput as well as it's scalable. So right now, there is no gas fees uh, needed when you are transacting on the near or specifically the Aurora EVM. Uh, but one thing to take note is that they are not using the Ethereum network as a security layer, unlike Boba or Matisse or uh, Arbitrum and Optimism, where they all use the Ethereum layer as the security layer. So how do you bridge from the Ethereum network into the Aurora network? You can use their Rainbow Bridge, which is their official, fully trustless asset bridge that allows for near and Ethereum compatibility. So I'll put a link in the description below, and that's the bridge that I use as well, and it's pretty uh, smooth during the whole process. So the first step is to purchase near Ethereum and send it to MetaMask. And the second step is just to go to the Rainbow Bridge and then bridge your near ETH from Ethereum to Aurora, and you should see your transfer complete after you're done. So it's quite straightforward.
So let's take a look at a couple of projects in the Aurora ecosystem. We have Nearpad, which is a launchpad as well as a DeFi hub of the Near ecosystem. Next, we have Rose, which is a liquidity protocol on Aurora, and it's incubated by Nearpad. So Rose is similar to Curve in the sense that it is a stablecoin swap protocol, and they are giving about 20% APR on stables right now. Next up, we have Trisolaris, which is similar to Uniswap. It's basically a Uniswap fork, and the Near Ethereum pair is giving about 50% APR. Then we also have WannaSwap, which is more similar to SushiSwap. Uh, in a sense, I think that they're trying to do more stuff. And it is also giving about 50% APR for the near Ethereum pair. And then we have Allbridge, which is a bridge between EVM and non-EVM compatible blockchain. So for example, if you are from the Terra ecosystem, where we have a lot of lunatics in the audience, if you want to bridge from your uh, Terra wallet into the near ecosystem or Aurora ecosystem, you use Allbridge and that's how you send your Luna and UST over. And last but not least, we have Octopus Network, which is a multi-chain network for launching Web3 blockchain applications, which is also known as App Chains. So Octopus Network is pretty interesting. Uh, I would probably be doing another video on that because it's a whole different layer or product on its own. In terms of the ecosystem, there is 800 million in funding initiatives to support the ecosystem growth. And if we look at TVL, Nia's TVL is already above 150 million, but the TVL on Aurora, which is the EVM on top of Nia, it has surpassed 600 million. And Aurora's market cap is at 221 million. So if you look at the MCAP over TVL of Aurora, it's quite low at around 0.33. Whereas if you look at most networks, they are between 1 to 4. So Aurora might be undervalued in a way, uh, but because this is a layer 2 and not a full-on like layer 1 like most networks, uh, I'm not sure if the same um, valuation applies. So there may be some kind of discount given to Aurora, especially since it is not the gas token of the chain unlike other networks. Recently, there's also a Luna Incentive program that has been passed, and this gives $2 million worth of Luna Incentive across multiple different ecosystems, and out of which 250 k is given to Trisolaris, and 250 k is given to Rose. Uh, this 250 k is in Luna, which has potentially dropped in value if you're watching this video, or maybe it's increased, you know, have to be optimistic sometimes. And uh, that's going to be given soon, I'm not sure when, but the proposal has been passed. So if you are looking to farm some Luna, then you might want to bridge some of your funds over into Rose and Trisolaris and get ready to farm some Luna. So now let's explore the tokenomics. The community grants will be released over a 60 months period, so that's 5 years, so that's pretty good. One important thing to note is that the lockup for the team is 1 year. So they launch on the 22nd of April, so we should be looking out for the 22nd of April this year for the unlock, and that's where the price might be volatile, so that's something to take note of. Uh, the prior backers, majority of it will be 24 months, so that's still quite a long time away. For the rest of the tokenomics, you can pause this video to take a look. So here's the inflation schedule. They have a billion tokens in supply uh, at Genesis, but there is about a 5% annual inflation. Uh, that's how they basically reward or incentivize the validators. But they have an inbuilt EIP-1559 already in the whole uh, network, whereby they would burn the transaction fees. So if there are a lot of activities in the near ecosystem, then the inflation might actually be deflation, as long as the amount of activity is to a certain point where they burn more near tokens than is being printed at the 5% rate. So hopefully that happens, and we don't have to worry about like this near token just keep on inflating 5% a year. But 5% a year uh, is actually not too much. So it's not something I would worry about, and it's over a very long period anyway. So like I mentioned earlier, it's about 5% per year inflation. Uh, most of this will go into the validators, and then some will go into the protocol treasury. Near burns the transaction fees, so there might be actually deflation uh, if the transaction uh, activity is very high. And some of the fees will be rebated to the smart contracts that is involved in the transaction. So in conclusion, Nier is a super fast smart contract that aims to solve the trilemma. Uh, fun fact, they are actually the third most commonly held crypto across uh, VCs and crypto hedge funds. So hopefully there's a very good reason why they're holding Nier. And if everything that I mentioned in this video is true, then Nier does seem to be a pretty good contender in the subsequent years. 
Right now on the Aurora network, there is actually zero network fees. So even if you don't bridge any ETH inside, although they are using ETH as the gas, you don't actually need to pay any fees because they are subsidizing it. I'm not too sure when they will stop subsidizing it, but I believe even after they stop subsidizing, it should still be pretty cheap compared to Ethereum. What I find pretty interesting is that they're trying to create a standard for Web3 infrastructure. So you know how our world basically runs on standard. And if everyone could align to a certain standard, like what Nier is trying to strive with their Nier SDK, uh, this is going to make it a lot easier for developers to go and make their dApps using the same kind of standard, which would improve the user friendliness of the dApps that we experience on the Nier ecosystem as well as like crypto in general. At the moment, I don't think there's a money market on Nier. So when that does come, inevitably, I think the price of Nia might go up in the short term, but the ecosystem is pretty nascent at the moment and I don't see a lot of dApps appearing yet. Ultimately, do your own research and invest with caution. And if you found this video useful, do remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!